Okay, so now we've finished installing uh, the McAfee gateway, we need to start configuring it. Uh, so the first thing to do is to log on. The McAfee web interface does use Java, so one of the prerequisites is to make sure you've got Java installed on your PC. You then want to navigate to the IP address that you set up during the installation, and the administration is on port 4711. Now the username and password to log into the web interface by default is not the password that you set during the installation. The default username and password to log on is admin and web gateway. Now the very first thing we need to do is install the license file. So this is done under configuration and license. And here you need to select accept license and download your license file from the McAfee Gateway website. If you haven't got a license file, you're running this under evaluation, then you should have an evaluation license file. Once we have licensed the software, the very first thing we want to do is to set up the, um, the login, the account. We're going to want to tie this into Active Directory. Two main reasons. One is so that you can log on to the software uh, using your Active Directory username and password and you can map security groups to Active Directory groups. And secondly, when we come to uh, start to create the rules, um, we can base filtering rules on uh, groups that users are in within Active Directory. We'll come on to that later. So the very first thing we need to do is to set up the accounts. So by default, we've got a number of uh, groups and roles here, and we'll look into the rules later. But the first thing I would always do is create a secondary internal account. Um, you can come here and change, this is the default username, so the first thing would be to change that password. And we're going to keep this user as a super administrator. Now you'll notice whenever we make any changes in McAfee Gateway, this uh, box up here highlights. So the changes don't actually take effect until you select Save Changes. If for some reason you made a change but don't want to actually commit that, you can select the arrow here and select dis, uh, discard those changes. Right, like I said, so we changed the password for the admin account. I'll now create a uh, secondary account. and I'm going to make this a super administrator as well. This means at least we've got two ways of logging into the system if for some reason we forgot the password for the main admin account. Right, the next stage is to tie this into Active Directory. And we do this under configuration. And we select uh, Windows Domain Membership. And we're going to join this to the domain. But we're going to need to uh, have a McAfee uh, account to use to communicate with the uh, with Active Directory. So to do that, we're going to go on to our uh, domain controller, and I'm going to create a new account called McAfee. Except so the password does not expire because this is a service account. As is always good practice, we should put a little description in here. So we're going to join this to the domain, so we select join. We're going to enter our domain. Um, so this is like the old school, so not the fully qualified, so it wouldn't be uh, into.lab, which is the full one, it's just the into part. Uh, the AD account that's going to be used to communicate. Here we need to list our domain controllers. Uh, in our lab environment, we only have one. Uh, that's uh, labec.into.lab, fully qualified. And then we need to use admin credentials just to join this to the domain. Should also say we need to um, select version two. So this should put my admin account in, select okay. Okay, cool, so this is now joined the domain and you can see the status is uh, green here. So this is now part of Active Directory. Now we've got that, we can go back to our accounts and we can now set up uh, integration with the administration system um, 
with Active Directory. So we select that here. We put in our um, Active Directory domain here and select go Global Groups. What I'm going to do is go back to Active Directory and I'm going to create a group. I'm going to call this uh, Web Gateway. Web Gateway Admin. And I'm going to add myself into that. Okay, I'm going to return back to the Web Gateway and I'm going to add, and I'm going to put the group in there and I'm going to make that super administrator. So we're putting in the group name here that we're going to map from Active Directory to the role set within the McAfee gateway. And hit save changes. Okay, so now we can go and test the uh, my user account. So we put my username in there, um, two dots lab, my network password, and select test. And we can see that, yep, we've uh, connected, we're using an external server, and that my current security role is super admin. So we've now set up um, a group, so any Active Directory users that are in that uh, McAfee admin group will now be able to log on and administer the server. Of course, we may want to create different roles up here. So we can create roles to uh, give access to different parts of the system, and then we can map them to different levels in Active Directory, such as uh, your basic service desk, your full administrators. Um, and we'll look into that a little bit later. So let's make sure this all works. So we're gonna uh, just log out, and we can go back to our username. And we have successfully logged in. It is also worth pointing out that this uh, computer has actually created itself in Active Directory as a computer. Uh, we look up at our computers, we can see. So if you need to uh, give this description and move it into the correct OU, um, then you may well need to do that. So next in our initial configuration is we need to configure the port in which we are going to um, connect to our proxy server. So most common ones is 8080, but we can configure whatever we like. And that's in, under the configuration. And let's pull up our proxies. And we can see by default that um, we're enabling proxy connections uh, from any IP address on port 9090. We can go in here and we can edit this to whichever, whatever port we want. So I'm gonna change this to 8080. Um, and obviously we can say that we're going to uh, treat SSL connections over port 443. So all the default um, options of this are fine. And now down here we can enable if we're going to um, use FTP um, and other different types of servers as well. Uh, for the purposes of these videos, we're just going to be dealing with the internet because um, we're just basically trying to get the, the system up and running. So we're just talking about uh, basic web pages um, and secure web pages. But, you know, like with all proxies, you can um, configure different ports to handle different types of uh, um, traffic and, and, and apply rules um, appropriately. Right, so now that we have set our port number to 8080, we are going to test. So now that we've uh, set up the basic configuration of the gateway, we're going to uh, set up our proxy settings on a browser and test to see whether this works. So we're going to put in our gateway address and we're going to put in 8080 as our port. Um, one good way to see whether traffic is going through the web gateway um, is to go to a test virus site. So this is a good site that I use. And there we go, we can see now we've been blocked by the gateway um, because it's high risk, it's a malicious download. So we can see we are now proxy, proxying through the web gateway and our very basic configuration is in place. So before we wrap up this video, just a couple of things I wanna show you on this uh, configuration page that you uh, need to or may find useful. Um, 
One is date and time. Because we're gonna be logging activity, it's important to make sure that um, the date and time is correct. Uh, here, it's gonna use its external NTP server. Obviously, um, you should have an internal NTP server set up, um, it's often a domain controller. Um, so you can change this here to be your domain controller so that everything is uh, got the right time. If we look up at network interfaces, you can see this is where we initially um, set up the, uh, the configuration for the NIC on the web appliance. Um, and so if you need to change your default gateway, for instance, because of um, uh, your firewall, etc., this is where you would change it, or if you need to change the static IP address. Um, DNS servers, often our DNS servers change over time. This is where you would uh, change your DNS servers. Central management, um, you can have more than one McAfee gateway. Um, my understanding is from our partner that you buy licenses for McAfee, not um, physical boxes. So basically, if you are licensed for 200 users, you can create multiple McAfee gateways for fault tolerance. Um, and so provided you don't exceed the total number of users, there is no license restriction on creating more than one McAfee gateway. Now, what that means is you might want to keep all these gateways in sync. So you would set up central management. Um, it's kind of outside the scope of the video, but I'm just uh, explaining the basics of, uh, of, of what central management is. Um, and this is where you would uh, have a single IP address and then that will push out the configuration changes to all your, all your different McAfee gateways. We're definitely gonna come up to EPO Orchestrator later. Um, we can use the EPO Orchestrator um, software to um, look at who's been doing what and getting reports out. Um, Orchestrator is a kind of management product, product for all of McAfee's um, software. So if you've already bought into the antivirus or endpoint encryption or enterprise firewall, um, you'll already probably be familiar with Orchestrator and will have it set up. We can configure um, the gateway to use that um, and to push its logs of activity up to the EPO server so that you can report in a central place. Uh, static routes, obviously you may have some things that you want to route differently based on its IP address, maybe to a different gateway. Um, so this is where you would set up your static routes. So finally, I'm just gonna show you uh, the dashboard. So the dashboard is where it gives you your general information, alerts and errors. When you log in, you would first, uh, you would first see this kind of screen. It gives you information on what your gateway engine is um, and also what your DATs are. So we can you can check to make sure that your DATs um, for the antivirus and malware are up to date. Um, under your charts and tables, this is a good indication to make sure that um, we are actually using the gateway. So we can, uh, if we just bring this down to um, the last hour, we can see just where I've started uh, routing my traffic through the web gateway. Um, we can see the traffic here. Um, websites that have been accessed, um, and we can see here that malware hits. This is the one virus site that I went onto, and it got blocked. Finally, the last thing to look at is um, making sure that we update the um, engines. They will happen automatically, but if you need to update them because of a uh, breakout of, uh, of a particular virus, then you can hit trigger update and we can see that it's gonna try to update the engine now. Uh, and this is probably important to do when you first have installed the system because obviously the DAT files are not gonna be up to date. Okay, well that concludes this video um, and then we'll move on to some more complicated stuff in the next video. Thank you for watching. I'm James Sillett and I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you have any comments or questions, you can contact me by any of the means shown below.